2003, Ocean Spirits has been studying hawksbill turtles, green turtles around Grenada and the islands between Grenada and Kariakou. But there was a data gap. We had nothing for Kariakou waters. This is a collaborative effort between Ocean Spirits, the University of the Virgin Islands, and the Hawksville Project, and we are undertaking the first assessment of the in-water population of sea turtles around the island. Collaboration is extremely important because Ocean Spirits wouldn't be able to do this without the Hawksville Project funding it, and the Hawksville Project wouldn't be able to do this without the University of the Virgin Islands assistance. So by everyone collaborating together, we get more than we would if we didn't. For Ocean Spirits, we are always a strong believer in working with the local communities as much as possible. So we're having some Grenadian fishermen, they're helping with the catching of the turtles. One of them is actually a vet, which assists with the write-up and the taking of samples. They know the waters better than anybody else. They know the best sites. These guys are in the water day in, day out. They know where the turtles are sleeping. They know where they see turtles on a regular basis. So you're using their local knowledge. You're giving them an opportunity to learn what we're doing, experience research. And as a result of that, we actually have had fishermen switch to research. Since I started working with sea turtles, when like, fishermen come with turtles during the hunting season, I will be like, no man, <laughs> right now. Yeah, things that I didn't understand like back then because it was a cult here thing, eating the sea turtles. But right now, I love just tagging and oh, trying to find out the population. If you can catch a sea turtle in Grenada, you can catch it anywhere in the world. Because they're the hardest, they're the feistest. You have to swim over them, but they'll make sure they don't see you. And you see like maybe 40 feet, 60 feet of them. And then you dive down stealthily. And just before you get there, if it looks at you, you shoot in, you grab it under the water. And some of these divers, the turtle is as big as the diver, yeah? So then you bring it back up to the surface, make sure it gets a breath, you get the breath. And then you stay there with this animal while he's trying to swing you up. Catching the sea turtles, I, want, I like to see the impressions on people's face when I catch one and I were like giving it to those on the boat to take their blood samples and tag and everyone would be like happy. I love this feeling. Okay, so the key is to do as much as you could in as less time as possible so you limit your impact or your contact with this animal because it's still a wild animal, yeah? We normally take carapace length, carapace width and other biometrics. We use Inconel flipper tags. The reason we tag our turtles, it provides them with identification. So in the future, anybody that picks up that turtle, they can look it up. We will know where she was first tagged, the year. We take biometrics, so we'll know the size. So if we see her again in three years' time, we'll have an idea of how much she grows in a three-year period. We've also been taking blood samples to start building a genetic database. And this is the key part, because through the genetic database, we'll be able to match these turtles, hopefully, to other Caribbean islands and see where these turtles are coming in. This is the baseline data, and at least gives Grenadian officials an idea of what they have or don't have here. And then going forward, you can always measure your results against this. This is year one, 2022. We'd like to come back here every year, roughly the same time. And if you do that over a long enough period of time, you can acquire a long-term data set, and that can give you an idea of the health of the marine ecosystem in Caribou. Through this study, we're starting to learn where their foraging sites are. This could help us decide future MPA grounds up here, where it needs protected. It can help us maybe set better limits with the capture of sea turtles. I think one of the best parts being involved in a project like this in somewhere I grew up is that I can understand the link between livelihoods and wildlife. So a lot of these conservation projects, you would have people coming from a different community trying to incorporate. So I could go to the fisherman and explain to him, this is why this is good, and he can tell me something that he wouldn't tell an outsider. So being an insider in conservation is good sometimes. So the people at Karyakou, they're proud to live here. They have a beautiful island, beautiful beaches, amazing reefs. People come from all over the world to dive and visit these sites. So it's important that they do protect their reefs, protect their habitats, protect their sea turtles, and there is a lot of people keen to do so here.